All right, today we are checking out a documentary, Battle of the Somme, a World War One documentary. This is from Real Truth History. Cool. Now, yeah. I don't know too much about World War One. Like, that was... Everyone, I feel like, harps on World War Two. Right. What I mean harps on? It's like there's a lot. Yeah, as far as schooling, we spent a lot more time on World War Two than I would say we did on World War One. Right, right. I, it, I, I just, I don't know too, I know more about World War Two than one, so. Yeah, I think that's most people, at least from uh, American educated yeah. people. So I, I get what you're saying there. But anyway, yeah, I'm ready to learn. You ready hey, to learn? It's always, it's always a good day of learning. Absolutely. So to take a break from <laughs> funny stuff yeah yeah 100 man yeah so get ready I'm, all right I, I got my learning hat on yeah you and me both man before we get in i just want to let you know that we picked this from our poll conducted on our patreon we put one out every monday if you want to be part of that and also get unedited reactions to tv shows and movies without all the pesky text on the screen and parts cut out of it patreon.com slash embrace the suck 21 link down in the description yep yep it's a great place enjoy it <laughs> me too are you ready yeah man let's do uh, the damn thing all right three two one the greatest battle in the world is on the eve of breaking Please God, it may terminate successfully for us. We were told it would be a walkover. Of course, we might expect to be sniped at by a stray German, naturally. I suppose one should lose one's head and get other men cut up. Break! I suppose one's legs should take fright and refuse to move. On the morning of July the 1st, 1916, 120,000 British soldiers, most of whom are volunteers, prepare to fight the greatest battle of the First World War. This is the story of one of the bloodiest days in the history of warfare. Modern weapons made killing possible on a shocking scale. 20,000 soldiers killed in a single day of fighting. Wow. This is no joke, man. That is wild. 20,000 people in one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's 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 it's, cra it's crazy. It's crazy. Like that that right there. One day, those casualties. You know, I, I want to know of that twenty thousand. How many were uh, KIA uh, and not wounded? Because you know, um, casualties means uh, wounded as well. So. Oh, okay, um, okay. I that part I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's just it's just crazy. Trent, this is all trench warfare, which blows my mind blows my mind i i i'm so i mean i almost ate my words there um it's it's absolutely wild because the machine gun changed everything oh yeah oh yeah the new technology like nobody knew what they had on their hands quite literally no, no. until this oh man yeah At the end of 1915, the Great War is not going well for Britain and France. After a year and a half of huge effort and heavy losses, large parts of France and most of Belgium remain under German occupation. Both sides have dug in, and a line of trenches stretches from the Channel to Switzerland. Wow. 
In early 1916, in an attempt to break the stalemate, the Allies agree to a joint summer offensive. The area they choose to launch this attack is a 26-mile section of the Western Front in northern France by the River Somme. There's a superior view up here, sir. This is more like it. It's very good drainage, sir. No more sitting in the mud in Flanders. The man in charge of Britain's part in the summer campaign is the newly promoted commander of the 4th Army, General Sir Henry Rawlinson. It is capital country in which to undertake an offensive. For the observation is excellent, and with plenty of guns and ammunition, we ought to be able to avoid the heavy losses which the infantry have always suffered on previous occasions. The British and German trenches are divided by an 18-mile long strip of no man's land, running from the village of Serre in the north to the river Somme in the south. Rawlinson's objective is to drive the Germans from their trenches and liberate the territory they have held for the last year and a half. <clears throat> this will be his battlefield. Under Rawlinson's command is a brand new army. The 4th Army is made up largely of civilians who had volunteered 18 months ago at the outbreak of war. Typical of this new army are the 22nd Manchester Battalion. They arrived in France in February 1916. Captain Charlie May is an aspiring author with a wife and baby daughter back in England. He kept a diary of his time on the Somme. We go because it is right and proper we should. One is supposed to have as a soldier going into action no other desire than some high-souled ambition to do or die for his country. Reality, I'm afraid, falls far short. In the same battalion was Sergeant Richard H. Tawney, a Christian socialist. He opposed war, but had volunteered after Germany invaded Belgium, turning down an officer's commission to serve in the ranks. Hatred of the enemy is not common, I think, among those who are here. How can you do your duty as a soldier if you hate him? To kill in hatred would be murder. I don't think we're murderers. Just executioners. Wow. That last line. That cut me deep, man. That's <clears throat> that's just it's just a uh that's a good way to compartmentalize what you're about to what you're about to go into. Yeah, you yeah. Know, because no one returns from war the same. I I believe you. I you believe know, you 100. Um, percent And so you have to you have to have these um these these you have to compartmentalize what you're going off to do. You got to be very sure of it, um, or else it's going to get to you and it's going to affect your psyche. You know, wow. and e I mean, even even the strongest, even the strongest among us, you know, you 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 see some shit and it's just it stays with you for the rest of your life. Like, it's just this part of you now. And it's unfortunate. But this generation, holy crap, did they see stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, man. <whistles> yep. What do you think they'll call the battle, Sarge? I don't know. The Epval, perhaps. Battle of Mametz. Call it anything. It takes two sides to make a battle. <laughs> Unlike Germany and France, Britain did not have a vast standing army to mobilize at the outbreak of war. Minister for War, Lord Kitchener realized Britain needed a much bigger army if she was to influence the war in Europe. He appealed for 100,000 volunteers. Within five months, two million men had responded to the call. Wow. 
A year and a half later, many are on their way to the Somme. It's impressive. Wow, man. Like thousands of others, Cyril Jose lied about his age to enlist. He volunteered to the 2nd Devonshire Battalion when he was just 15. He regularly writes to his mother and sisters, Ivy and Myrtle, back home in Cornwall. That's my sister, and that's my mum. <laughs> What's so funny? Dearest Matt, we have just come back from church parade and holy communion. Chaplain asked me my name and where I came from. Asked me how old I was too. Of course, I couldn't tell a chaplain a fib, so I told him. Patted me on the back, said, splendid, splendid. Not bad of him, was it? Goodbye and God bless you all. Love from Cyril. General Rawlinson's plan for the song is shaped by one major concern. Aware that his volunteer battalions have no battle experience, he opts for a simple strategy. It does not appear to me that the gain of two or three kilometers of ground is of much consequence. Our aim, rather, should be to kill as many Germans as possible with the least loss to ourselves. Fight and hold, gentlemen. Take what the Germans have all along here and invite them to try and take it back. The German army had arrived on the Somme in September 1914 and dug its first trench. A year and a half later, this has grown into an almost impenetrable defensive system. Trenches created a new kind of warfare. With miles of barbed wire and hundreds of machine gun posts protecting them, every attack is extremely costly. Rawlinson's strategy to counter the Germans' defences is simple. A long artillery bombardment will destroy the trenches and kill the German soldiers. He will then send the infantry over the top to march unopposed across no man's land. They then repeat the process, trench by trench, across the entire front. We thought you were going to go home. With bunkers up to 40 feet underground, often with electric light, for German conscripts like Private Eversman, the Somme is one of the safest places on the Western Front. He kept a diary of his time there. We sit here doing not very much. Apart from the rats and lice, who are always with us, it is not too bad. Riech doch mal. Das hast du doch nicht selber gefüllt, oder? Du bist der Abschaum der deutschen Armee. Prost! Möge uns wer Dörr erspart bleiben. Für immer. Und darauf, dass die Preußen nicht hierher kommen und uns den ganzen Spaß verderben. It must become second nature! Stick him! Rawlinson's volunteer army lack the German army's battle experience. To make up for this, they go through intense training. For 16-year-old volunteer Cyril Jose, drill in the British army's traditional weapon is relentless. Dearest Ivy, stand back. I've got my own rifle and bayonet. New ones. With the bayonet fixed, it reaches up to my ear from the ground. Stop tackling! Give me that rifle. Long point. Clack. Withdraw. Clack. Simple. Nearly got it hot today. I had my bayonet fixed in my room with the sheaf off and pointed it at another chap. 
Just then the sergeant walked in. Keep those lights straight! By George, didn't he swear? He told me it was one of the greatest crimes in the army to point your banner at anyone. Said I could have got three months confinement. I'm sorry, man. I'm I'm just seeing Lord Melchit in this guy. Yeah, dude, I, I just I I, I uh, you know what what happens what happens is the volunteers, right? Yeah. Um it's it's mad different. It's a mad different mentality. Yeah. Because if you volunteer, then you could unvolunteer. Right, and, you could and, leave at any time in a, in a psyche, but that's not the way it works. That's not the way it works at right. all. Right, and I I don't know what the psyche was leading up to this. Like, yeah, how much how much time in the ground? How much time in the trenches had there been? Had had stories been disseminated properly? Um, and how, you know, how bad did, were the reports and did the, did the British people know that it wasn't all fun and games? Like I, I put that lightly, but right, it's, it's right. a huge thing. If, if you're constantly told you're killing it, you're slaying it, you're winning, you're, you're doing good. Then of course I want to volunteer because we're obviously doing something right when that's not the case at all. Right, right. And it's interesting to note that many of these people didn't have that experience at that time. So yeah. they didn't have a reference point to warfare. And so that's that's a key ingredient to that. And and that's that's the thing. Like you gotta you gotta have that 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 fight inside you. And a lot of them ended up having it, you know, but it's right out the right out the gate during training like it's a tough sell you got to break them you got to break yeah. them and i think that's where the the british army excelled is they made men out of these young boys very very quickly they did they had to man up basically yep. and yeah. it's it's unfortunate the bullets kind of sort of separated the rest yeah yeah and you have a better reference point of this. Well, Me, again, like earlier, I stopped it because I saw Lord Melchit yeah. in this. And I, yeah. I, no, but still, it is. That's remember, I cannot not think of Blackadder through right. all of this. Right, right. Thinking about the poor ostrich that died for nothing. Yeah. You know, and then it's just, it's crazy how this happened. Oh, my God. It's yeah, it actually wild. did happen. And it, it it's key. Shout out to the writers of Blackadder for making such a serious subject funny. Yeah. 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 And that's that's the that's the crazy part of it. You know, is that oh, I, I got I got to see because I don't know enough about this. And I feel like this is I know the Psalm. I know I know that name. I just the Battle of the Psalm. I know that name. I just don't know what it is. Right. So, right. It was so. It was taught while we were all mostly asleep in that yeah, class. Much. No, pretty yeah. much. Yep, pretty much. Yeah. With six weeks to go before the attack, the previously quiet Som sector is undergoing a transformation. Shells have to be stockpiled. Roads have to be built, drains dug, water pipes and telephone lines laid. Like many other battalions destined for the big push, the Manchesters provide the labor for this huge task. clerk before he joined the Manchesters, Arthur Burke describes the preparations for attack to his brother back home. My dear Reg, now here's the excitement. We're digging a trench in front of our own line. Now you know what that means. Shiver came down our backs when we knew we were for it. 
Oh, well, we're fighting for this solid place. If it were mine, I'd give it to them. Save all the fuss. Man. about them buggers. If the name's on it, it's got it. <laughs> of course, Fritz heard us coming, so he began giving us a warm time. And you know you can't dig without making a noise. So when we did start, our friend over the way didn't have to get his wind up. We were dodging and digging from 11 till 2.30 a.m. I wasn't we glad when time was up. I've been in the line since Tuesday, doing six days in the firing line and four days in reserve. This last time has been a bugger. For Captain May and Sergeant Tawney, censoring the men's letters is a daily duty. I hate doing this. It's amazing what you discover, though, isn't it? About the men, I mean. I'd rather not know some of it. You know Dooley, Prince's platoon? He was sitting on the Paradox one night, while the batteries were firing. One of our shells, pitched short, entered the ground with a fierce thud right under the spot where the man was sitting. It was a dud. Lucky old Dooley. God bless the fool who made that shell, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Never even troubled to change his position. There you go. Cyril Jose writes home, describing the build-up for the big push with the second Devonshire's. My dearest mother, we had rather a rough time. We've been working on building the parapet thicker besides doing sentry duty, so we can only get a little sleep between reliefs. If I have three hours sleep in 24 hours, I consider I've done well. Wow. So I hope you've not been worrying. God bless you, Cyril. Well, three hours of sleep must be like a full night's rest in that and condition, how, right? And how many days did he say? 24 hour period, like 11 days. No, 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 three man. three hours and like three days. So you only yeah. got to combine three hours and that many days. Dude, how do you not like that's the thing, man. That confined close quarter space would drive me insane. Would absolutely drive me insane. Oh, my you God. Are, you are basically building your own grave. Trench warfare is holy crap. Thank God for airplanes. Yeah, yeah, there's, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah, like during this time, they didn't really have airplanes during World War One, yeah. right? No, I mean, yeah. they, they did, but they were like the biplanes, you know, like they weren't, yeah. they weren't effective. They, I, I think they, they rigged up some sort of bomb dropping mechanism, but it wasn't anywhere near, well, obviously nowhere near what it is now, like no shit. But, right, right. But, <laughs> but nowhere near like effective. Yeah, no, nowhere near what they had when World War II came around. Yeah, yeah. They they had like projectiles that were meant for something else, and they were just dropping them out of planes. So yeah. Them shits just did all this other kind of crazy stuff that they weren't built to be dropped from planes. So there you uh, go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Speak of the devil. Yep. The increased Allied activity on the Somme is soon noticed by the Germans, who respond by reinforcing their defenses. When Rawlinson receives reports of this, he demands to see what the Germans are up to for himself.
Rawlinson discovers that the Germans have not been idle. They have started building a whole new line of trenches beyond their two existing ones. It is an ominous sight, signaling that the Germans intend to fight hard to hold every single yard. To defend their well-developed trench system, the Germans had a powerful weapon, the machine gun. Strategically placed all along the front line, the machine gun posts are heavily protected and are manned by expertly trained crews. One well-positioned gun can lay down a hail of bullets over a distance of 3,000 yards. <whistles> Lieutenant Franz Cassell and his unit like all others along the Somme, are now in a state of high alert. Besser. Also, das Ganze nochmal. The British preparations for the offensive involve a massive logistical challenge. 400,000 men and 100,000 horses have to be moved and billeted. But the key to Rawlinson's plan will be the bombardment set to be the biggest in British military history. Over one and a half million shells are stockpiled. To More Willie than they have with fired in the past 12 months of the war. General Rawlinson is under no illusion about the challenge facing his inexperienced army. Nevertheless, he remains convinced that with the right amount of guns and ammunition, he can destroy the German defenses and avoid heavy British casualties. On June 24th, five days before the attack, the guns begin the methodical destruction of the German trenches. It's the biggest bombardment the British Army has ever mounted. Day and night, the barrage never stops. Forced to take shelter in their underground bunkers, the Germans wait for the barrage to lift. Lieutenant Castle and his machine gun crew are in the defences at Thiepval. We were exhausted and slept as much as one could. The noise of the barrage was so constant prevented sleep for overtired people. Entschuldigung. Habe ich das letzte Mal schon gelacht, als du das gemacht hast? Wollte dir noch eine zweite Chance geben? Gib mir noch eine dritte Chance und ich hau dir eins in die Fresse! Jetzt hört endlich auf zu ratschen! Oh mein Gott! Wow! There was only one anxiety. Could one rely on the sentries? They stood on the top steps of the dugout and had to watch across the parapet to see whether the enemy was coming across. Day long, night long. Mm. And not all men are heroes. As the Allied bombardment enters its third day, British aerial reconnaissance reports the apparent destruction of the German front line. Trenches have been leveled, lines of supply and communication cut, but unseen from the air, Thousands of German troops are still safe in their bunkers. Oh my God. After 72 hours of constant bombardment, conditions for Private Eversman are swiftly deteriorating. Von der MG Einheit. Die Haken war so ruhig. Ich jeder hat seinen Anteil genommen. How long will it go on? 
In the last 12 hours, they estimate that 60,000 shells have fallen in our sector. Wow! Every communication has been cut. So, warum gibt's Neuigkeiten aus dem Hintern von? Nichts. Die Briten scheinen uns am langen Arm verhungern lassen zu wollen. It cannot last much longer. They say their munitions will soon be done. But when will they attack? Tomorrow? The day after? Bless you. Sorry. Who Thank knows? you. It wasn't just their dugouts that protected the Germans. Although the British bombardment was on an unprecedented scale, many thousands of their shells failed to explode. Oh wow. General Rawlinson is unaware of this and believes wow. that his artillery has destroyed the German defenses completely. Uh. All along the front line, British troops now ready themselves for the fight with the enemy that they volunteered for almost two years ago. Sir. Over there. Captain Charlie May of the 22nd Manchester's records the final countdown to attack. More orders. Still they come. The full scap is piling up into formidable piles. One almost begins to feel that if any mistake is made in the fight, it will be from over-organization. Rawlinson's meticulous plan details the objective of every single man due over the top. So that's A Company on the left, then us, B, and D Company. We're all in the first wave going over at zero hour. So, we'll follow a creeping barrage laid down by our 18-pounders to Black Trench, a gentle walk. Then, when we get here, the barrage will lift on to the next target over there in Danzig Alley. We will then reassemble, ready for the final objective, which, as you're all aware, is here and here. Sergeant. Every tenth man will wear one of these polished pieces of metal on his back to enable our artillery to spot our progress. And oh if the sun doesn't God. shine, sir? Oh, I'm quite sure GHQ will have organized that. <laughs> Finally, the use of the word retire is absolutely forbidden. And if heard, can only be a ruse of the enemy and must be ignored. Good. Carry on, Sergeant. Oh, my God. That can't be good, right? Well, no, just retreat is not an option. Retreat is not an option. Well, they're, they're right, right, right. All in. Yeah, they, that, that, that took me back. It's like... Retire, like oh, like retreat. So retreat, that's, yeah, yeah. If you hear, no one utters retreat. If you hear it, then that's coming from the enemy. Got it, got Holy it. Holy crap! And, and I thought you were had something to say about that little shiny thing that every tenth person was going to wear. What do you think? Good I, idea, bad I, idea. They did the best that they could. They you best know, they could with what they knew at the time. I mean, I don't know if you saw the aerial photos. Uh, there's a lot of dust in the air. There's a Dark lot of is. smoke. There's, I'm um, in every. See, my thing is, you are putting a god level amount of trust in your artillery. So they're they're creeping up, and the artillery is bombarding in front of them, right? Ah, uh, yeah. And supposedly, they're going to move the artillery. Bombard them while they move up to that. But what happens if there's miscommunication? They bombard themselves, <laughs> and that's not good. Mm -hmm. And that and that is a very I'm pretty sure that is a very real thing that, oh, that yeah. plagued this war. I believe it. Captain Charlie May and the 250 men of B Company are to attack from trenches 150 yards away from the German lines at Mametz. 
Their objective is to take a series of enemy trenches, culminating in Bunny Alley and Fritz Trench. Then, just one day before the attack is due to start, heavy showers and low cloud descend on the Somme. With poor visibility hampering his artillery, Rawlinson decides to postpone the attack 48 hours until July the 1st. While the guns continue to bombard the German lines, 120,000 men, poised for attack, are ordered to wait. Oh! Come on, men! Come on, rockets! Come on! And so here we still are, with speculation rife and rumours bright and rumours grave, twiddling our thumbs and wondering. This one's for you, Andrews. Okie dokie, Thomas. Come along. All dressed up and nowhere to go. Hmm. from everywhere today is excellent. The moment seems very auspicious for us to strike. On the eve of battle, the 22nd Manchesters finally leave their billets and move up to the front line. standard equipment, men carry 250 rounds of ammunition, two mills bombs, a waterproof sheet, sandbag, field dressing, emergency ration, including biscuit, smoke helmet, wire cutters, pick and shovel, with the heaviest tools carried by the strongest men. Goodness. Good God, Others man. carry barbed wire, fence posts, field telephones, even carrier pigeons. Such is the confidence in the artillery bombardment. The men carry everything they need to take and hold the German trenches. This immense, overwhelming tranquility of sky and down, uniting us millions of enemies and allies in its solemn, unavoidable embrace, dwarfed into insignificance the wrath of man and his feverish energy of destruction. It was a perfect evening. One forgot the object for which we were marching to the trenches. Is that the new rest home? Before the attack, a culture of optimism runs from high command all the way down through the ranks. Brigadier General Rees has recently taken command of the 31st Division's 94th Brigade. You are about to fight in one of the greatest battles of the world, and in the most just cause. Remember that the Empire will anxiously watch your every move. Keep your heads, do your duty, and you will utterly defeat the enemy. You will be able to go over the top with a walking stick. Rifles, you will not need. No. As the Major General said, all we'll find in Teepval is the caretaker and his dog. You may take prisoners, and if you do, they'll be sharing your rations, not mine. Any shirkers refusing to go over or caught behind the line will be shot. Okay. 
They're not messing around. Despite oh. the faith General Rawlinson has in his artillery, he is also prepared for heavy casualties. He orders that 18 ambulance trains be standing by to evacuate the wounded. American heiress Mary Borden left Chicago to work for the Red Cross at the outbreak of war. She has since set up a mobile hospital attached to the French army who are fighting alongside the British on the Somme. Ten kilometers from here along the road is the place where men are wounded. This is the place where they are mended. We send our men up the broken road between bushes of barbed wire and they come back to us, one by one, in ambulances lying on stretchers. We conspire against their right to die. We experiment with their bones, their muscles, their blood. Vous avez tout ce qu'il vous faut. Très bien. Mademoiselle, je vous aime. When we hurt them, they try not to cry. Often, they apologize for dying. Wow. On the eve of battle, 120,000 men squeeze into the British frontline trenches. The artillery barrage will continue until the very moment they are scheduled to attack. 7.30 a.m., zero hour. After six days and six nights under constant bombardment, Private Eversman writes what he believes will be his final diary entry. My head is like a madman. The tongue sticks to the roof of the mouth. Almost nothing to eat and nothing to drink. And no sleep. All contact with the outer world cut. Haven't we had enough of this frightful horror? This hell concert? Mm. If I may not see my loved ones again, I greet them with that last farewell. All along the front line, men write what could be their final messages home to their families. Cyril Jose, who joined the army when he was only 15, writes to his mother back home in England. My dearest mother, so sorry I haven't written before, but after I wrote you last we went in the trenches and it was too wet to write. Weather spanking up to now, though Fritz chucks his weight about a bit just to relieve the monotony. Lots of skylarks singing over the lines. We hear one first, just before standing to arms in the morning. Ivy asks whether I've grown taller, shorter, thinner or stouter. Well, I think I've grown a bit taller and bigger. About five foot six and a half I must be now. It was five foot four and three quarters when I enlisted. We'll write again soon as pos. Goodbye for time and God bless you all. Best love from Cyril. Man. That's deep. At midnight, Sergeant Tawney and the Manchesters have yet to reach their positions in the front line. I don't know anything more exasperating than walking one to two miles with a stoppage every 10 or 20 yards. Especially when you're one of a long string of tired men and have a rifle and other traps hitched to you. What is the problem up there? It's a box up, Sarge. You and you, get these men shifted. Oh, my God. Oh, sorry, pal. Oh. 
What is that? Probably flare, like white phosphorus, maybe? Yeah. It is early in the morning when the Manchesters finally reach their positions for the attack. For you. Have come down. Zero hours, seven thirty. Heard some of the men singing the Marseillaise earlier on. You know, they don't know what it is. If you want to know, I don't give a damn about France. Jerry's can have it. Well, we're here now. And they're not going to push us around. Like many, Captain Charlie May considers the possibility he might not survive the coming battle. I must not allow myself to dwell on the personal. There is no room for it here. Also, it is demoralizing. But I do not want to die. Not that I mind for myself. If I have to go, I am ready. But the thought I may never see you or our darling baby again. Turns my bowels to water. It may well be that you will only have to read these lines as ones of passing interest. On the other hand, they may well be my last message to you. Know through all of your life that I love you and baby with all my heart and soul. That you two sweet things were just all the world to me. I pray God I may do my duty. For I know you would not have it otherwise. Man. God. Man. Man. That's, that's just... That's another one to cut me deep here. They've had a lot of cutting deep moments here. Well, I mean, listen, it's just... it's It's real, man. You know, like when you face your mortality... And yeah, you're like I, I, I give kudos to anyone that joined up for any war. I, first and foremost, any join up for any war or any army ever. Hats off to you. Um, but especially when you have a family and kids, like yeah. I couldn't imagine. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that. Yeah, at all. You know, yeah. Um. It it is it is a very different game, and it takes it takes you when you when you when you think about your immortality, it takes you out of out of the present, which is a very dangerous thing uh, on a on a battlefield. Is you got to be present, you got to be aware, so you don't. Ha it's almost like you don't have time. You shouldn't think about mortality. It's like not good luck because your mind isn't there. But yeah, very important. To always keep that in in the back of your mind. Yeah, I so, couldn't imagine. That's it's crazy, just, man. Mm. Ugh, I couldn't even fathom it. That's that's and, and it's just like everyone's in the same boat. Yeah, from, from higher ups. Well, the highest of the ups is sit comfortably at a map somewhere mm -hmm. in the back. Yeah, yeah, and that's the part that's just like oh, you know. There, he's just moving around blocks on a map. Mm -hmm. Those blocks represent thousands of people. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess it, it takes a special kind of person to be able to swallow the or dehumanize that whole scenario of just pushing blocks around on a board. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it because mm-hmm. he, he has all the weight of that decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Saturday, July first, nineteen sixteen. The British Army prepares to launch its biggest attack of the First World War. Its volunteer army, untried in battle, is about to face the ultimate test. Sergeant Tawney witnesses the final frenzied bombardment of the German line. It was not a noise, but a symphony. It did not move, it hung over us. It was as though the air were full of a vast and agonized passion, bursting into groans and sighs. One had only to lift one's eyes to be appalled by the writhing of the tormented elements above. Ten miles north, the second Middlesex have the greatest distance to their objective, 750 yards of no man's land, nicknamed Mash Valley. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's seven football fields, bro. Yeah, that's a long. That's, that's big. A long way. Yeah, yeah. Oh my I, god. Like, I've heard the term "no man's land" thrown away, thrown out in other scenarios, not war related. Yeah. Now I'm understanding the terminology and where it's coming from. Yeah. It's, crazy. it's helping. It's helping me understand that. Second Lieutenant Alfred Bundy arrived in France only three weeks ago. It is freely stated that there will be no resistance. Our drum fire has been going on for days, and the German lines appear to be pulverized. Surely nothing can live there. Lieutenant! Those men up there, get them down! It's a walkover, sir! It's nothing of the kind! Get them down now! In command of the four battalions of the 94th Brigade on July the 1st, Brigadier General Rees has a perfect view of the final bombardment. stood on top to watch, and it was magnificent. The trenches in front of Sir changed shape and dissolved minute by minute under the terrific hail of steel. Watching, I began to believe in the great possibility of success. Inspired by the final barrage, optimism runs high throughout the British front line. But Captain Charlie May is not so confident. Our gunnery has wrecked his front-line trenches all right. But we do not yet seem to have stopped his machine guns. These are popping off all along our parapet as I ride. I trust they will not claim too many of our lads before the day is over. My dear Reg, these are a special few lines which I want you to take care of until perhaps you hear from me again. Everything at present is absolutely thumbs up. It's very cheerful. Still very bright and trusting to the best of luck. Remember me sincerely to my numerous kind, good old friends. My dearest love to Ma, Tot, Monty and babies. Trusting this is au revoir, not goodbye. Your loving brother, Paddy. Man. Faster! 
15 minutes! Suppose one should lose one's head and get other men cut up. Fix! Give it here, Jimmy! Suppose one's legs should take fright and refuse to move. between precipices and no one knows the rottenness in him until he cracks and then it's too late Harry your watch can I thanks here is difficult let me Good luck. See you in Danzig Alley. Yeah. Mm. Do not shout. Do not run. And for God's sake, boys, do not bunch. to write a few lines before the post goes. Suppose I'll get leave soon. Oh, these horrors of war. Well, goodbye for a time, my dear. Love to all, Cyril. Man, just like the anticipation is... It would be killing me if I was there. I mean, on top of everything else. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh my God! Like, like yeah, just, I just, I just, I it, it blows my mind that this kind of warfare was fought and like, I mean, talk about just throwing bodies at the the basically just cannon fodder, mm -hmm. you know, right. and I, I and I don't I I think that. I hope everyone watching this with us knows there's no disrespect in what I'm saying and that the people there aren't brave. You know, in fact, they're probably the one of the bravest, you know, and all. I mean, that, that's just crazy. You know what you're getting into. The machine mm -hmm. guns haven't shut up. You know that the artillery hasn't worked. So you're about to go up and over into machine gun fire. Yeah. That's not survivable. Mm-mm. It's a literal trial by fire. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. That's just, that's, that's it. The only chance you get in that situation is hopefully multiple machine guns misfire at the same time, or their barrels melt from being yeah. too busy mowing everyone down. Yeah. W with this new technology, like they're, they're, you don't know what to expect. You're throwing caution to the wind and just going going at yeah. it with this new technology this is absolutely terrifying oh yeah oh yeah four miles behind the front line rawlinson and his staff officers watched the culmination of their months of planning now Come on. Sick! 
Let's go in. Right on schedule, at 7.30 a.m., along the entire 18-mile front, 60,000 men leave their trenches and start out across no man's land. Mm. <coughs> Stay with me, won't you? You'll see me, Jimmy, and we'll be fine. Will you be with me? Look, it's just a short walk. One end of Old Trafford to the other. Castle and his machine gun crew have survived the bombardment. Oh my God. Like thousands of other Germans, the end of the barrage is the cue to leave their bunkers and defend their front line. They rush out of their dugouts and run to man the machine gun posts. Still alive. The moles have come out of their hole. In the south of the battlefield, the 22nd Manchesters lead the attack on Mamets. We had 900 yards of rough ground to the trench that was our first objective. No bunch on your left! And about 1,500 to a further trench where we were to wait for orders. Our colonel had watched us mount the steps and his last remarks were, isn't it wonderful? We extended to six paces and walked. In the centre of the battlefield, the second Middlesex are halfway across Smash Valley. Don't bunch back there, keep formation! It is the first time Lieutenant Bundy has led a platoon in battle. My platoon continued to advance in good order until we had reached nearly halfway to the Bosch front line. Steady, Middlesex! Here they come. The cocky yellows. Not only has the British bombardment failed to cause heavy casualties among the German troops, it has also failed to cut through much of their barbed wire. Advancing British soldiers are forced to funnel through any gaps in these defences, making them easy targets for machine gun fire. Just right there! 300 meter! Fertig! Fire! Oh my god. Oh my god. I shouted down, but most of those that were not hit had already taken what cover they could find.
In all directions came pitiful groans and cries of pain. Less than a mile away, the second Devonshires start their attack at Ovilaires. Cyril Jose is in the first wave at 7.30. You have something to say yeah why why and and you know i'm just i'm just a a lowly enlisted man not not brass and i'm not anywhere near those rooms that are air conditioned and lovely making these decisions with bricks with we yeah, have with bricks and and cover and all that good stuff Block, um, sorry that's what i meant to say and, and and here's hear me out on this. What and this is more for everyone watching with us. I know it sounds like a suicide mission. Why didn't they go directly after the bombardment happened? Is it because they believed that they were successful? That they were just it's like meandering through. Like there was no, they were all walking. Like they were all walking. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's just because they thought that it was, it was, there was nothing left of the German line. Good question. Because I would have. I mean, granted, that's all hindsight. That's stupid to say. Never mind. That's pointless. No, uh, no. I know because it's history. It's, it's done. But it's like it's crazy. You know, you would, you would think that at time it. As soon as the last artillery show is fired, they're like there. But I guess back then, accuracy wasn't. They, you couldn't fine tune that stuff, and there's a lot of you don't want to have heavy self casualties. Um, but then again, you're you're facing slaughter. You know. Yeah. Well, it, it was you said this right before we came back on that. All of the Great War was based off of was one on sole manpower. Yeah, and like we didn't back then, they didn't have yeah. the technology to be more accurate and save lives, and to be able to do a lot of those tasks from an airplane yeah. or yeah. from other it was safer places. Yeah. It was all done by watch. Yeah, yeah, that was your uh, most accurate thing was the, your watch. Yep, that's cr oh my god, it's different. That's so crazy, so yeah. crazy. But all right, it is mm -hmm. what it is. I mean, that's it's absolutely just a massive loss of life. God mm -hmm. damn. All yeah, right. and also, like we said before, we came back on. It was the war to end all wars, it, and it, it didn't. Yeah, yeah and it didn't. Man. Mm -hmm. We went over with the feeling in us of the song, over the top, over the top, and never come back again. People say you go absolutely mad. You don't. I've never felt so cool and matter-of-fact in all my life. Wow. I was surprised. From his dugout, Brigadier General Rees watches his brigade advance. I have never seen a finer display of individual and collective bravery than the advance of that brigade. I never saw a man waver from the exact line prescribed for him. I was still more surprised by the reception. Of course, we might expect to be sniped at by a stray German, naturally. You know what a hailstorm is. Well, that's about the chance one stood of dodging the bullets, shrapnel, etc. Oh, 
Johnny has had me for a target for over 13 months, chucked all kinds of stuff at me, from coal boxes to iron foundries. Oh, oh my god. Then you only managed to put a bullet through my shoulder. Oh my god. Stray sniper. As Brigadier General Reese watches his men decimated by machine gun fire, there is worse to come. The German artillery, which the British thought had been destroyed, begins to open fire. frightful artillery display that I have seen up to that time and in some ways I think it was the heaviest barrage I have seen put down by the defense on any occasion mm. in the far south the Manchesters have crossed no man's land in 15 minutes and taken the enemy trench that is their first objective. Wow. Wow. That was quick. Stay sharp, you man. They have a further three trenches to take this morning. If it's all like this, it'll be a cake walk. Oh, God. I hate touching wounded men. Sarge? Moral cowardice, I suppose. I've seen him. Just you keep building that step. One hurts them so much, and there's so little to be done. Losing the barrage. Leave the wounded. Get the men ready to move. All right, lads. This is it. Captain May's company move on to their next objective, but they are a few minutes behind schedule. The artillery barrage covering their advance on Danzig Alley has already moved forward. Oh my Germans god. Time to man their defenses. Oh god. Oh, keep moving, keep Rawlinson arrives at his headquarters, four miles behind the front line, and receives the first reports on the battle. Enemy barrage reported feeble. I know that. I was there. Anything in the last few minutes? From 8th Division, sir. Gentlemen, we've broken through the German line. The early reports reaching Rawlinson are positive. In reality, though, the attack is faltering along most of the British front. One significant breakthrough has been made, though, in the south of the battlefield, near Mametz. Get a firing position and keep those bloody mags in bed down! For Christ's sake, leave him. Get in there, Sergeant Tawny. The Manchesters have taken their first objective, but are now coming under fierce German counterattacks. <laughs> the 
Germans were brave men, as brave as lions. It was insane. It seemed one couldn't miss them. Every man I fired at dropped, except one. Him, the boldest of the lot, I missed more than once. Not that I wanted to hurt him. It was missing I hated. That's the beastliest thing in war. The damnable frivolity. God forgive us all. By 8.30, an hour into the attack, some 60,000 British soldiers have been sent into battle. Oh my God. Less than a third have achieved their objective. In just 60 minutes, it is estimated that 30,000 have become casualties. Oh my That's eight God. soldiers hit every single second. This is back to what you were talking about earlier. That's crazy, dude. Oh my god. Like the fact oh my goodness. It's hard for me not to get pissed off, but it just that's the way it was then. It it it, it it's just infuriating, you know. I'm not a I'm not a fan of frivolous freaking but I, I guess sacrifice for positions yeah. on a board, but I mean I, I get it in the grand scheme of things, it needed to be done. And a foothold needed was needed, and they got it. But yeah. my God, did that come with a monumental cost? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you could talk more about it than I can. Me, I'm just well, absorbing it as you know well, someone that wants to learn about it. Remember, also, this wasn't my war. This right. Is, this is this is way before my time, and it's just, it's still mind blowing. It's like holy crap it's mm -hmm. just the gravity of it all you know i can't and that's why i try not to, to you know everyone in my in in the, the the everyone has warred differently all right yeah over generations and i'm yeah. not going to judge anyone's war but at the same time this is just different. right it's something that hits close to home to you like yeah. something you could talk intelligently about okay. and give an intelligent opinion about but there's nothing intelligent like there's nothing intelligent about this. It's like throw all the bodies until the guns melt. God yeah. damn it. Yeah, they're basically was, cattle at that yeah, point. And that was the strategy. That, that was the strategy. There was no, there was just overwhelming numbers. Mm-hmm. Strength. Yeah. Strength. Uh strength in numbers is probably not the right term for it, but it's, like yeah. You you just you just had to outlast the enemy. Yeah. Throwing yeah. the bodies. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just, it's crazy how tactics then, like just after this war, never again. They never, yeah. they never appeared again, really. Mm -hmm. um, and thank and, goodness. Oh, man. Absolutely nuts, dude. Yeah, no kidding. Half of the first wave are lying dead or wounded in no man's land. Mm. Throughout the morning, a further 60,000 British soldiers go over the top. They emerge from their trenches to face fierce German machine gun and artillery fire. For Lieutenant Castle and his machine gun unit, the advancing troops are an easy target.
second lieutenant, Alfred Bundy, is still trapped in no man's land. Here, the bombardment has completely failed to destroy the German defenses. Bundy's first experience of battle has been watching his platoon die. Oh my god. All right there. Where is it? German line. Which way? That way! A massacre is unfolding across the 18-mile front. Brigadier General Rees has seen much of his brigade destroyed, and it is becoming clear that the attack here at Serre is going disastrously wrong. He now decides to go directly against Rawlinson's orders. What does signal say? Line's dead, sir. Have the second wave support gone up yet? The wildest reports were rife at this time. Messages were pouring in. An aeroplane reported that my men were in Serre. That is an ignorant joke. The only men we have in Serre must be prisoners. Where is the brigade reserve now? They're moving up to go over now, sir. Stop them. On no account must those men be allowed to leave their trenches. Sir? My two staff officers were considerably surprised when I stopped the advance. Do you hear? Yes, sir. It was their first experience of battle, and they had great difficulty in understanding that the whole brigade had been destroyed. By mid-morning, Tens of thousands of men are pinned down, wounded or dead, in no man's land. That's crazy. News that the attack is not going to plan yep. has reached General Rawlinson at 4th Army Headquarters. I don't think I understand. We can't both be right. Have we consolidated in Sir, or are we in retreat? The 31st is in Sir. I'd like to believe you, but at this moment I'm not sure I can. Message to Goff. Tell him the cavalry won't be moving before 1400. Rawlinson's only significant breakthroughs are in the far north and south of the battlefield. But amidst the confused reports arriving at headquarters, Rather than push home the advance with his cavalry, he decides to wait. After their initial success, the Manchesters have been decimated by heavy German counterattacks. Captain May and Sergeant Tawney are in dire need of reinforcement. We've got about 20 men fit for something! Company! Our right flanks in the air! They can't have just disappeared! I'll find them! Wait! You men! Three rounds rapid fire now! In a desperate search for more men, Sergeant Tawney sets off back towards the British lines. Of course, it was idiotic. If our company had lost half or more of its strength, why should A Company have fared any better? Up there. I suppose the idea of death in mass takes a lot of hammering into one before one mm. grasps it. Reinforce! 
Oh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Tony's search for reinforcements is over. By midday, Rawlinson has started to learn the full extent of the failure of his plan. Is it true? We're not in Thiepval. It's been pretty brisk. And, sir? Sharp there, too. Casualties are already starting to arrive at Mary Borden's hospital. Most of the wounded, however, are still stranded on the battlefield. It was my business to know which of the wounded could wait and which could not. If I made any mistakes, someone would die on their stretchers on the floor under my eyes, who need not have died. Donnez-lui de l'eau si l'on réclame. I've learned to read the signs from what is written on their tickets and from the way they look and the way they feel to my hand. My hand can tell of itself one kind of cold from another. Can tell the difference between the cold of night and the stealthy cold of death. This is the second battlefield. The battle is going on over the helpless bodies of these men. Un blessé au poumon vient d'arriver, vous pouvez le prendre Dans 5 minutes. Mademoiselle, attachez ses bras. It is we who are doing the fighting now, with their real enemies. At noon, after eight days underground, Private Eversman is still fighting hard to defend the German line. Lieutenant Alfred Bundy has been pinned down in a shell hole in no man's land mm. since the attack started four and a half hours ago. I occasionally attempted to move to my right and left, but bullets were forming an impenetrable barrier. I was almost tempted to take a chance and crawl back in daylight. I was dreading the dark, for I thought I should lose my sense of direction in my distraught condition. Out of the 800 men of Lieutenant Bundy's battalion who attacked that morning, 540 have been wounded or killed. Wow. Damn. Yeah. That's a lot. Jesus Christ. War as hell. War as hell. Wow, man. 500 <sighs> are wounded or gone. Yeah. In Out of by hundred. Yeah. Christ. And this is all by midday ish. Yeah. Like within the hour that they <laughs> went over the top. Mm hmm. Ugh. Oh, my God. Across the whole battlefield, almost 60,000 British soldiers have become casualties. <sighs> Six times the number expected by Rawlinson. Thousands of men are dying of their wounds in no man's land. This is death. Oh, man. I don't know what most men feel like when they're wounded.
What I felt was that I'd been hit by a tremendous iron hammer, swung by a giant of inconceivable strength, and then twisted with a sickening sort of wrench. Oh. <sighs> Barrett. Of course, it was imbecile and cowardly. Stretcher bearers! They couldn't hear me, and if they could, they wouldn't have come. Stretcher bearers! It was asking them to commit suicide, but I'd lost my self-respect. Uh, after more than six hours of fighting, the 22nd Manchesters have made it only 1,000 yards from their front line and have still not taken Danzig Alley. Wow. Captain Charlie May is unaware his friend Sergeant Tawney is lying wounded a few hundred yards away. Ready, lad! One, two, three, come on! Finally, the Manchesters break through into Danzig Alley. Now face to face with the enemy, fighting with bayonet and hand grenade begins. It was hell. We stuck the blighters and put them out of turn. They threw up their hands. Mercy, camarade. We give him mercy. I don't think. Stick him! Stick him, lads! For Albert Andrews, his face to face meeting with the enemy is a moment of truth. I was on guard and had my bayonet at his chest. He was trembling and looked half mad, saying something to me which I did not understand. That's good, Alice. That's Alice. Please bring him to you. All I could make out was that he did not want me to kill him. Oh, Bert. Oh shit! Not doing. Almächtiger, haben Sie Erbarmen. Denken Sie an meine arme Frau, Männer. Look at him! Lass die Engländer mit mir Erbarmen haben. Come on! Go on! Get out of it! Go! Soft! Oh my god. Hey man. Hey, uh, you know, uh when the situation was flipped, there was no there was no mercy. Mm-hmm. You know, because where are you yeah. gonna put where you have to advance. You can't be bogged down with prisoners. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. It's, it's not logistically possible. So right. yeah. Yeah. No. I, I war's hell. Those are the demons that lived with these people for eternity. Yeah, not just the time in combat. No. Eternity. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that guy 
kind of thing was going on all along the line. No Germans being spared. Wounded were killed by us all. We hadn't exactly been told no prisoners, but were given to understand that was what was wanted. The same kind of thing occurred at the second German trench. And the third. We captured many guns, etc. All sorts of souvenirs. But the souvenir I treasure most in my life. Pray to God, Reg. And thank him for sparing me such mercy. Captain Charlie May is not so blessed. His body is found outside Danzig Alley. No one saw him die. My darling, au revoir. Know through all your life that I loved you and baby with all my heart and soul. That you two sweet things were just all the world to me. May's battalion have taken their objective at enormous cost. Of the 820 men of the 22nd Manchester's who attacked that morning, 472 have been killed. Wounded mm, or are missing. Despite the British breakthrough in the south by Mametz, along most of the 18 mile front, fierce German resistance has effectively destroyed the attack. is wounded in the fighting at Thiepval. By late afternoon, he's able to leave his machine gun unit to receive first aid. Another half hour, and it becomes clear that the attack has been repelled. I find Captain Meschenbier of the third company suffering from a heart attack. few men from the second line remained alive. It is not yet apparent that July the 1st has been the worst day in British military history. In his diary that evening, Rowlinson notes that there are 16,000 casualties. In fact, his army has lost many more. Almost 40,000 lie injured and over 19,000 men have been killed. Jesus. Rawlinson's offensive has been a murderous failure. Oh. Is... Only a fraction of those... Is that who Melchit was crafted out after? Is him? It wouldn't surprise me. It sounds... Yeah. It sounds least, like it. At least his incarnation in Blackadder Goes Forth. I yeah. mean... Three, two and three, obviously not, but yeah. I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if that's who he was crafted after in Black Adder Goes Forth. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Lying wounded on the battlefield are evacuated to hospital. Thousands die in no man's land of wounds which, if treated, would not be fatal.
After hours lying in no man's land, Sergeant Tawney is found by a medical officer. He can't have been more than 25, <coughs> but his face seemed to shine with love and comprehension. He listened like an angel while I told him a confused yarn. Then he said I had been shot by a rifle bullet and gave me morphia. Later I realized he thought I was done for. But after I felt that divine compassion flow over me, I didn't care. I was like a dog, kicked and bullied by everyone that at last found a master. much at Mary Borden's hospital ambulances continue to bring wounded men from the battlefield the air was thick with steaming sweat mud dirt and blood I'm not hungry. I'm not tired. I am busy. Mademoiselle, venez par ici. Je suis occupée. C'est vous qui lui faut. It is a scene in eternity, in some strange dream hell where I'm glad to be employed, where I belong. We are locked together, the wounded and I. C'est un anglais? Qu'est-ce qu'il fait là? English? You're wounded in the stomach. You'll be fine. La morphine, tant qu'il en faut. Private Eversman is one of an estimated 8,000 German casualties. His diary is found on the evening of July the 1st. Mm. What will be the outcome? Heaven knows. Shall I live to see the breaking of a new day? For the Allied commanders, there is no question of abandoning the offensive. With many wounded still in no man's land, fighting resumes the very next morning oh on God. July the 2nd. Seventeen-year-old Cyril Jose is one of the lucky ones. Wounded in the first five minutes of the battle, he is evacuated to hospital and then back to England. My dearest Ive, I couldn't get back to our own lines until next morning. I didn't eat anything, but lived on pulling off dead men's water bottles. At 6am I began crawling back. 
Old Johnny sniped at me all the way back, but I dodged him by getting in the shell holes. I heard of our battalion, 27 answered roll call after the battle. So you can imagine, 27 out of a thousand men. Thank you awfully for the postal order. Love to father, mother, Amber. Cyril. 27 out of a thousand men. Mm-hmm. Like so many others, Captain Charlie May was buried where he fell. A shockwave travelled through the British Isles as thousands of telegrams told mothers, wives and lovers that their men were not coming home. The battle on the Somme ground murderously on for another four months until it fizzled out in November 1916. It ended on roughly the same ground on which it had begun. Both sides bled dry. The final combined casualty figure for the British, French and German soldiers who fought there was over one million dead, wounded or missing. Oh my mm. God. A meaningless carnage. This battle in the war that was supposed to end all wars was in fact only the beginning of the bloodiest century in history. Well, he survived. There's lines. He's promoted to captain. Right. He survived. The first day. Yeah, he was killed October 9th. 1917, by Shell, remained with her hospital till the end. Well, that was nice of France, I guess. Injured by German Shell, July 8th. Treated for shell shock. Sent back to fight in France in 1918. Wow. Became a communist. Oh my goodness. Survived. Oh, 30 wow. hours. Wow, 30 hours. Became a professor of economics. Good That's for him. Crazy. Battle. He approached a fellow officer, asked him to provide for his wife and daughter. Wow. Wow. Dude. World what can War one man? Jesus yeah. Christ. What can you say, man? Dude, I mean, you can't like. I mean, it's 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 such a a massive loss of of life, such a unneeded. But at the same time, in that moment, in everyone's eyes, that was the necessary call. Be it completely ridiculous and prideful move to to try to mount a, a an attack like that. 
with in, with the new guys. Yeah, um, yeah, and that, that's what happens. That's that's the that's the dangers, you know. Yeah, but, but it hey it it's just amazing. That generation lost. What was it? I think I want to say I I I googled this and it's like the UK lost. 880,000 men in World War One, oh which was six percent of the male population of the yeah. UK. Absolutely insane. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, man, it's war there th- no one wins in war. Yeah. There are no winners. There are those that have lost that lost less than others, but everyone still loses or yeah. has lost. So it's a zero sum game. Yeah, it's uh, and it's unfortunate. Sometimes it's 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 necessary. Sometimes it's necessary. So it's just it's crazy. You know, I mean those 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 men out there were probably the bravest people that have ever been documented in yeah. history. And they went in, they're all just boys. Yeah. And and you know, I mean they're all men at the end, the ones who did survive, oh, but fuck yeah. Yeah, there was the humanity was lost on those, yeah. you know, Ab- at the top. Absolutely insane, dude. Absolutely insane. Yeah, absolutely yeah. insane. But I mean, it's it. You could see how much it's. Well, I mean, in in my case, I would say progressed since those times. You know, but even though yeah, it's hard for me to say progress when the subject of the matter is war yeah but yeah they're not this craziness now a lot less casual inducing yeah there's um, technologies that allow you allow a lot of lives to be saved even before the first fire uh is shot yeah, yeah. the first shot is fired sorry yeah and 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 that's 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 crazy i mean granted loss is going to happen loss has happened but yeah but nowadays we've kind of you couldn't imagine we went to war now and just in one day lost how many? 60,000? Could you imagine? Yeah. Like, I mean, it would probably be even more than that with the oh, yeah. nuclear technology that is available now. I don't know who said it, but I think the quote was, I don't know what weapons World War Three will be fought with, but World War Four will be fought with rocks and sticks. Yeah, I think that was Einstein. May have been Einstein. Yeah. 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 I think it was. But, but very wise words. <laughs> but anyway, I, it's it's crazy. What can you say? I'm I'm glad that we're learning a little bit about this stuff because for me, World War One, I, I, I don't know too much. Yeah. I don't know yeah. too much, man. It's it's unfortunate because that was like the first time on a global level we all kind of sort of banded together in our own crazy ass ways. Yeah, and yeah. Where where lines were drawn, alliances were made. Yeah, so that it's it's crazy. And now I know a little more. Now, yeah. I, now I'll never forget what that is. Yeah, you and me both, man. You and me both. You know. So, so, whew. yeah, and a timing since it's you know Veterans Day weekend in the U.S. Remember it's Day in the U.K. So perfect timing to be putting this one out. Yep, yep. That's that's how, I mean that's it's just great. And and salute to all you that have served or families of those that have served. Yeah. Including you, Daniel. Thank you. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, it's just it's crazy. There, there, it's it's ah, uh, you know, thank you. It's just crazy. it's it's amazing. I, and I massive thank you and respect to all you guys that have had a part in defending uh our respective countries, you know. Amen. Um, Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but what a great, what a great documentary. What a great yeah. What a great that doc. It was not a documentary. It's like a summarization of the Battle of the Somme. That, yeah, remember that's not all World War One was. Right, right, right. It was. It was very well by uh, real truth history. They did really well with it. Yeah, so like for that. that, we thank you. Yeah, for that. I like that a lot, man. Yeah, we'll probably be coming back to you for a lot of other things. Oh, yes. coming down the pike on these docks. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah, but I can't wait to see what the what the next one is because now that my interest is peaked. Yeah, your guys is too. Absolutely. And yeah, 
I think we'll end it here. Yep. Thanks for watching. Somewhere around to subscribe and watch another video. And we'll guess we'll see you in the next one. Later, guys.